Thank y'all for coming out tonight. Has it really, really, really been two years? And what a crazy, crazy two years. Not just Natchez, but across our nation. We experienced things as more than any of us could imagine. But I will tell you, here in Natchez, Dan and I spoke every evening about all that we were grateful for. And I know he's biting at the bit to come and share some of those great and exciting things. But before he does, I want to introduce to you Robert Johnson III. He is our state representative. He is a native Natchezian, but most of all, he is a sincere friend and a blessing to this city. Help me welcome Robert Johnson. Thank you all. It's so good to be here uh, in a place that uh, I came to a couple of proms, uh, came to my first concert. My, my parents brought so, little kids, I was about 10 years old, to, uh, to a uh, R&B concert here. They wanted to come, they had no babysitters, they brought us. So I've been a music fan ever since, Mr. Ely. Thank you. So, uh, and it's, it's good to be here with legends like Mr. Ely and some of the other people here. It's also important that uh, I want everybody to give our, uh, our law enforcement, firemen, and all our public servants a, a hand, please. They're, they're, they're sitting over here, but, uh, and they, they don't have a voice in the sense that they have somebody up talking all the time like I do, but you need to recognize that they have a tough job and they don't ask for any extra recompense. They just say, just appreciate what they do and they'll continue to do what they do. And I, and I, I always respect and appreciate that. So I'm, I'm thankful for them. You know, uh, the city motto says that Natchez is probably the oldest city on the river but with the brightest future. And, and I think that's a wonderful way to put it. But I want to tell you after 30 years in politics and government that, and as a lawyer, one thing that you have to recognize that you only have a bright future individually as a community or as a city or a county if you keep moving. You can't be still. And that's what's been important about Natchez. Natchez has been fluid. It didn't, when, when all our industry, international paper, the tire plant, uh, you know, uh, John's Mamba, when they left, nobody sat down and said, oh, woe is me. Everybody went to work. We had all kinds of creative ideas, different, different industries introduced to come in here and get things done. We kept moving. But it takes leadership to do that. Now, I'm going to tell you something about uh, Mayor Gibson. I wasn't a believer. He was one of the nicest guys I'd ever met. But I said, now, I knew him when he was mayor of Crystal Springs. Now, he's going to do something I've never seen anybody do. He's going to come and be mayor of Natchez after being a Republican mayor of Crystal Springs and be a Democratic mayor of Natchez. And I say, now, if he, can, if, he, if he can do that, then maybe we got something to work with. And well, lo and behold, he did it. But let me tell you what's important. I don't always have to agree with him or anybody else. I don't always have to be on the same side of any issue. But what I do appreciate is what my dad always taught me is, you got to work. You got to put your feet to the ground, you gotta, put, you, gotta, you gotta put your hands in the dirt, and you gotta make it work. And what I appreciate is I come here, I'm talking about a welcome, but as an elected official, let me tell you something, Natchez won't move, Adams County won't move, the state of Mississippi won't move without a team, without cooperation. And so I'm here to say, I'm welcoming you here tonight for this State of the City Address, because I wanna hear where we are, because I'm part of that team. I can't do it at the legislature by myself, the mayor can't do it here in Natchez by himself. We have to work together. And so we're going to continue to do that. And so I'm glad to see the, the, the representation that we have here tonight. And I'm thankful for it. And I'm thankful for the leadership, the aldermen who are here sitting across the front, the attorneys who are here, the, the, the policemen, the, the, the firemen, the citizens who care enough to be here and, and talk about what we need to do. And a mayor who will listen to everybody. And everybody here will listen to the mayor but they also will get on his behind when he ain't doing what he's supposed to do. 
So I appreciate that and welcome here to the oldest city on the, on the, on the Mississippi River, but the city with undoubtedly the brightest future. Welcome tonight to the State of the City. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Alderwoman Sarah Carter Smith, serving my third term on the Board of Aldermen. And I'll be darned, the mayor heard me singing the national anthem, so he has asked me to do this again. I, I had my singing uh, ability for a, quite a while, but now I think he knows, so I think everybody else is going to know. But I have to say I disagree with Representative Johnson on one thing, and that is law enforcement doesn't have a voice. Our police chief has a voice, and he talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. <laughs> But when he talks, he is fighting for his, his police department, as does our fire chief, and I'm grateful for, for both of them and all of their great, great staff. So, And he's become a, a good friend and a trustworthy, great department head for the police. Um, I, but I'm glad to be here tonight. It's, we're mid-year and mid-term into this, uh, these four years, and as Marla mentioned, and we get to talk about our accomplishments. We get to talk about the things that are great that are coming in the near future. And we get to talk about things that, that we're going to continue to improve. We know Natchez isn't perfect, but I think we're all here tonight because we love Natchez. And we know what it means to us, what it means to people all across the earth. You don't go anywhere where you don't meet somebody that has some connection or some something with Natchez. But speaking of connections, when I, when I met this mayor, before he was mayor, um, we had come across one another on different fundraisers, uh, Real Men Wear Pink, which he was the head of that, and, and music festival things and other things. And I thought, God, that's a really nice man, but you know, is this for real? I don't know about all this. So when, when he did call me and tell me he was going to run for mayor, he thought I might be running, which I wasn't. Um, he had to kind of push me and push me to run for alderman again. It was starting to get a little frustrated, um, as a lot of people know. But I'm, I'm proud to be to serve with this mayor, to serve with this board. We've got some new leadership, and we're accomplishing things. And that's for a lot of different reasons. But one of it is because of your vision because of your connections. You don't go anywhere with this mayor where he doesn't know the person he grew up with them. He was served on the um, the legislative at Mississippi State. He knew the sister of this brother's best cousin friend. I mean, it is just unending. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I don't even know how you keep it all straight, but you do, and you know names like nobody I've ever seen. And he thinks he doesn't, but he does. Um, he's very, very good at that, but he's, he's got the vision we need. He's got the leadership that, we, that we've that we needed. Um, he's got so many things, but most of all, the heart for Natchez. He didn't grow up here, but he grew up coming here, and he loves this town as much as I do. I grew up here born and raised and moved away 20 years and I'm, I'm so thankful to be here tonight and to be living in this beautiful town of ours. But tonight I'm here to sing the national anthem and I know we're all grateful that we live in the United States of America, the greatest nation on this earth. And although it's not perfect, we know that, it is something to be thankful for. And we need to be thankful for the people that fall for our freedoms, thankful those that serve currently, and we need to honor them tonight by singing the national anthem. And if y'all would stand with me, and I'd love for y'all to sing with me as well. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the We're so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. No. Right. 
you, everybody. And I get the pleasure of uh, introducing our next Pastor Robbie Kayford, who's going to lead us in our invocation. And this, this woman is a dynamo. Um, she's become a friend to me. And she, like I did, move, has moved back to Natchez. She's not here full time, but she is here most of the time. But she's amazing. She has started Rolling River Reloaded, as many of y'all, I'm sure, have enjoyed the excellent food there. She's got a great event space there. But that's just not enough for her and being a pastor. She's going to open this business incubator called The Vault, which has rented space, which is helping small businesses grow and learn how to be successful training space where you can rent if you're a small business just starting out and you can't afford to rent a whole building. It's amazing. And what you've done in such a short amount of time with it is amazing. So I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad you're going to do the invocation for us tonight. Thank you, Robbie. Let us bow our heads and pray. Eternal God, our Savior, Lord, we just thank you for this day, for this is the day that you've made. We choose to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. We thank you for such a beautiful city on the river, Lord God. We just pray that you will continue to cause us to advance, to progress, to excel in every facet possible. We thank you for our leader, Lord God. We know that when the righteous rule, the city is at peace. And so, Father, we pray that your peace will continue to rest upon this city. We thank you for every leader of every department, that you would give them strategy, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom as they lead these, your people. We thank you, Father, for the citizens of this city, Lord God, who make this place what it is. Father, even when they are discouraged or distraught, remind them, Father, that you are with them. You are with us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but you will be with us always, even until the end of the earth. And Father, I'm convinced of your word that the last shall be first. And Father, we've seen some last times here in Natchez over the past decades or so, but we're believing, Father, that we're rising to the occasion, being first in every area of our lives, every area of this city, every area of this state, and we're going to represent the kingdom of God in true fashion. I thank you, Father, for a spirit of unity, Lord God, that would invade this city. Your word says in Psalm 133 and 1, oh, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So where there is strife, Father God, where there's contention, Father God, where there's division, we pray for your spirit of unity, Lord God, to cover us. And Father, we pray for love because your word says that love covers a multitude of faults. So Father, Father, even when we don't agree, Father God, give us the power and the ability to agree to disagree, Father, but to do it in love, Father, because all things, oh God, that you're calling us to do is for the betterment of your kingdom, is for the advancement of our city, is for the advancement, Father God, of our community, and is for the growth for the state of Mississippi. Father, although, Lord God, we can pray a lot of things, but we pray for your spirit, Lord God, to reside in Natchez, Father, for your spirit, Father God, to dwell amongst us, for your spirit. Spirit, God, to lead us, Father God, for your spirit to cause our businesses to excel, for your spirit to give our leaders, oh God, strategies and concepts, for your spirit, Father God, to cause us to become on one accord. And Father, we'll forever bless you and glorify you. And I believe by faith, oh God, that you're going to do exceeding and abundant above all we could ever ask or think according to the power of God that works in us. And Father, for those, Lord God, who are just a little bit tired, I pray that you would give them a second wind. Win. Give them a second win to serve, a second win to sacrifice, a second win to step up to the plate, a second win to keep going forward, and a second win to stand through the test of time. And Father, we'll forever bless you and glorify you and honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whew. Okay. So I have the privilege of introducing our mayor. About seven years ago, I met uh, Mayor Gibson. He wasn't the mayor at the time. And I am also, like uh, Representative Johnson said, he smiled a lot. And I'm very leery of people who are always smiling. Because at some point, you got to have, something got to be going on. It got to be a down day. Something, something has to be happening. But when I really realized that the smile was real, that he was authentic in his own way, that he was very transparent and he was an honest man. It caused me and my husband, uh, who moved away from here in 2013, to decide to come back to Natchez and choose Natchez. Choosing a place to, yay, y'all getting all my money, okay. Choosing 
a place to invest a lot of times has a lot to do with what leader is in place. And one of the things that I was telling my mom today, I said, I have to introduce Mayor Gibson. And I don't really know what to say uh, besides some of the stuff that I, you know, that I know him personally. And my mom reminded me of our family motto. It's once a task has begun, never leave until it's done. Be the labor great or be it small, do it well or not at all. Mayor Gibson has shown us, despite how you may feel, despite what you don't agree with, that you cannot argue with numbers, you cannot argue with stats. One of the things he has done is kept his word and kept his promises on many things. And another thing that I love so much about him, he's accessible, he's approachable. I've been in cities where you don't see the mayor, he's not present, but Mayor Gibson is at everything. From a baby shower, to a Mardi Gras ball, to whatever it is, and you got access to coming in his office. Sometimes I would fuss at him as a friend. Like, damn, you don't need all it. Come on now. You know, somebody got to stop at the door. But he allows you to have access to him. He allows you to have a conversation. He wants to hear your concerns. And also, he's very dedicated. Whatever he decides to do, like a bull, he's going to get it done. You may not agree with how he gets it done, but he's going to get it done. And I'm glad to have a mayor that's a go-getter, not a person that sits around and just watch the city go down or watch things not happen. But he'll get up and go get it, like some of the young people would know, like outcasts would say, you got to get up, get out, and get something. But anyway, that's our mayor. He's going to go get it. And he's never negative. Never negative. Some of us would always, all oh, Natchez this, all oh, Natchez that. But every time I see Mayor Gibson, he has a positive affirmation to say about Natchez. And he celebrates every win, whether it's big or small. And I want to say to all of you here today, he cannot turn the city around in one year or two years. It takes time. But he has done a hell of a job. Come on, somebody. We at church. <laughs> Turning it around. He quicker than right now and faster than just then. And he's done a very excellent job in leading our city. So much so that others are looking to invest. Others are looking to come back home. Other people are excited about being here. He has single-handedly with the support of his board and all of the leaders that are in place, he said they have single-handedly built the morale. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but people here are happy to be here now. People are glad to work here now. People are glad to serve here now. And that wasn't always the case. And I will say this on public record. Y'all better not mess with my friend. Because I believe in Mayor Gibson. I believe in the vision that he has. And I believe that he's going to see everything through just like he promised. Give him some time. Jesus needed time. God needed time. Give him some time to do what he's called to do. But I want to welcome to the stage my good friend of seven years that I met through some amazing people, the Ruthers in the back, the Honorable Mayor Dan Gibson. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I, <laughs> I am overwhelmed. I want to just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, Representative Johnson, thank you. Known you so many years. And truly, over the last two, it's, it's surpassed all of the previous 20-something. I count you a dear friend. Um, I thank you so much for that amazing rendition of our national anthem but also, Sarah Carter-Smith, thank you for those kind words. I thank Robbie Cade Furge for that amazing introduction. Oh my goodness, I, I, I'm glad we recorded that. <laughs> amazing, and I want to thank YZ Ely and Casey Gilbert. Give them a hand. <laughs> YZ, YZ came to me before I ever set out on this journey and said, I want to help, and I'll never forget that, YZ. I want to thank my beautiful First Lady, Marla. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. And you'll see that the apple doesn't fall far from the pretty tree. I thank, 
I thank God for my mother-in-law, Sandra. It's so good to have you here. Well, now our aldermen, our public officials, our supervisors, our department directors, and everybody else, your time is coming. But right now, it is time to get started because we've got a lot to share. And it is a wonderful time to, to celebrate. And so I hope at the end of this, you all will be glad you came. And let me just say in advance, I'm very glad you came. Thank you for being here. We are going to report on the state of the city right now. For the second time, second year in a row, it's hard to imagine where two years go. But like the mighty river, we must flow forward together. And that is what we're doing in this city. A river is ever forward in a constant state of renewal. And the successes we have seen bear that out. The Natchez renewal is fully alive, moving, and it's all of you. It is not the work of one person, but there is nothing that I could accomplish alone. It is because I have you, all of you. We are a team. And so I celebrate with you tonight. We are that Natchez current. And our current is strong. Let's report on what currently is happening. I want to talk about business, jobs, jobs, and jobs. Well, we have, since last year, added so many more businesses, up from 70 last year to now over 180 new businesses. That in itself is historic. Our job count last year, feel free to applaud. We're here to celebrate. <laughs> Uh, last year, our job count was approaching 700 after one year. We now have lost count. Let me tell you why we've lost count. Because so many of our new businesses are already growing, and some of our existing businesses are growing even more. I'll give you just a few highlights. Just last year, we announced that loss prevention was adding, growing, they just told me a week ago that they are running out of space. What a good problem to have. Southern Designs, those young guys, they are expanding their footprint, look for more great things to happen. Delta Fuel, I saw Clint Vegas, he was smiling. Of course, he's going to smile right now. That is a joke. But he said that they have almost doubled since moving to Natchez. Natchez has been good for Delta Fuel. In fact, I just celebrated last weekend a 30-year party, 30-year celebration party with Jordan Carriers, and Charles and Doug Jordan shared that since January, they have added almost 80 new drivers, and they plan to add another 80 more between now and the end of the year. And in less than a month, they will break ground on a brand new 28,000 square foot headquarters right here in Natchez. <laughs> Delta Energy, World Energy, Vondrell, Jones Lumber, Core Civic, they all are hiring. And in fact, if you go on Indeed.com, you will see that there are over 600 job listings in our city right now. I want to talk about Velocis Biofuels. Velocis, about to be America's largest biorefinery, breaking ground here next year and bringing with it hundreds, hundreds of jobs. I'm excited about Natchez Rail, just completed a $16 million renovation. We can now take a fully loaded car from here to anywhere along the eastern seaboard, all thanks to the work of so many. Our industrial park is full, isn't it, Chandler Russ? In fact, every available square inch, well, no longer available. That's a good problem to have, all under contract. Well, let's look at the... Statistics, Pastor Ravi. Let's look at our building permits. Let's look at our sales tax. Let's look at our real estate sales because this is how we can really tell how we're doing because facts are stubborn things. Building permits, last year we were excited. We had raised them up a few hundred. We are now over 1,300 for just the last two years. Over 53 million in new construction. Our sales taxes continue to break records. Last year, we were excited. A record year last year. 
And last year, we broke 500,000 five months in a row. Guess what? Right now, we are 300,000 ahead of where we were at this time last year. And we are breaking half a million. It's exciting. Real estate, we're out, folks. In a, in a, in a county of 30,000 people, we have less than 100 houses available for sale. In fact, in a city of 15,000 or, or maybe more, they're telling me now, we have fewer than 28 houses available downtown. It's unheard of, but it's opportunity. We have now our DNA, our Downtown Natchez Alliance. We have now our, we are Mississippi Main Street community again. We are working on our code enforcement. We have a new city planner. Tourism is up. Festivals are up. Believe me, festivals are up. We're wearing ourselves out. And in fact, the pilgrimage, the special events, car shows, bike rallies, when we're talking about economic development, you know where I'm headed. Tourism is still our number one industry, and we are thriving. Our Mardi Gras events, our Eurofest, our Juneteenth celebration, our music festival, celebrating 31 years this year, the Natchez Festival of Music. Our Natchez Little Theater celebrates Saturday, 90 years. We will have the Monroeville Jubilee and just next weekend. We had a successful Mudbug Festival. Great this year, even better than last year. And last year was hard to beat Stratton because it was the best small festival of the year in Mississippi. It got the award. We just enjoyed Alabama. What a great July 4th. But may I say, the Blues and Soul Super Bowl, YZ, is coming in October, and we'll be welcoming Patti LaBelle, not to mention <laughs> CeeLo Green and Cool in the Game. We can't can't wait until October because we'll also have our 37th annual balloon festival. And also in November, our 22nd annual Angels on the Bluff. It's become so popular, it's had to now go to two weekends for the first time ever. Now, before we get there, go ahead and mark your calendars for Longwood Afternoon featuring Dana Carter and our own Eleanor Swede and the movies. We've got to talk about the movies. Get ready. We have a few coming soon to a television or theater near you. We can't wait for Rumble in the Dark, starring Aaron R. Eckhart, to be released. From Black, a thriller filmed here in Natchez back early this year. And a New Orleans Noel to hit Lifetime this December, starring Patti LaBelle. And it was not filmed majority in New Orleans. It was filmed in Natchez. And then, if you want to tonight, just go ahead and find a Hallmark Channel. Somewhere in the world, every day, somebody is now watching every time a bell rings. I, folks, I need a little applause for that. We have some other tour opportunities to celebrate so many things. Our Natchez U.S. Colored Troops Monument is now about to approach the design phase. I, I am excited about our hop-on, hop-off tour buses. We are the smallest city in the world to have it. Redneck Adventures, Mid-South, uh, you know, the broadcasting. They brought us the Bigfoot Festival, the Bass Tactic, Tactics, and there are so many other things they're bringing. Forks in the road. I am so proud of what's happening there. More federal money on the way as we continue to expand that footprint. Our Proud to Take a Stand monument, we completed the lighting, the signage this year and rededicated it. We are now on the Mississippi Freedom Trail, folks. We are now, Mr. Purnell, you shared this vision with me a long while ago. We're on the U.S. Civil Rights Trail and the Dr. John Banks House the original headquarters for the NAACP here in Natchez is now going to be featured on that tour. I'm proud that more attention is being given to historic sites in our African-American community, such as the Rhythm Nightclub site, 
Watkin Street Cemetery, and yes, we are now working regularly to help with its maintenance. And then we are putting a spotlight on Revels Plaza. We've already started phase one of what's going to be a great thing. Now, we can't talk about tourism and economic development. Richard, I need some help. I'm supposed to have some people out there getting excited and applauding. Dr. Myers, <laughs> Dr. Myers, I'm about to get to the most fun part of this, I think. And Warren Ruther, if anybody needs to applaud, you do. I'm going to talk about conventions and conferences. I'm about to talk about what we've been bringing to Natchez. Our Natchez Literary and Cinema Celebration, our Spring Governor's State Tourism Conference, their largest spring conference in the history of the MTA, and it was right here in Natchez. We just hosted all of the Mississippi Chancery clerks from all over the state. We are right now hosting this week, next week, and the next, the Mississippi Head Start Conference. And I had the pleasure of administering the oath to the new Board of Directors for Mississippi. Mississippi Head Start, what our children mean to us. Chief Daltrey's, he, he, you know, Sarah, he does have a lot to crow about. He is now the new president of the Mississippi Chiefs Association. And because of that, Mr. Ruther, you'll be excited, Mr. Tipton. He's bringing the Chiefs Association back to Natchez this winter. But not to be outdone, our fire chief, Robert Arrington, I love Bob A. He is, he may outdo you, chief. He's bringing the Firefighters Association here next year, and that's the largest association, one of the largest meetings in Mississippi each year. Every room will be blocked. We're talking about six, 700 people, and they're celebrating. And they're celebrating their 100th anniversary here in Natchez next year, and they've already committed to coming back in 2024. I want to talk about workforce development. Is Tawana Williams here? Tawana, you have been a game changer. Tawana, there she is. Tawana is working under a partnership between the city, the county, and the school board and it is one of a kind in Mississippi. And we are absolutely excited. Working together with Natchez Inc., our Natchez Adams County Chamber of Commerce, Alcorn University, Colin, the Wynn Job Center, and the Fallon Center, multiple programs are already in place and more are being added. Right now in Natchez, you can train in anything from nursing to biology to social work to criminal justice, to welding, carpentry, automation and control, auto body repair, early childhood development, digital media, and yes, we have CDL, commercial truck driving. We had the license program back in Natchez, thanks to Coastal and Colin. That's exciting, isn't it, Sabrina? And we also are so grateful to Mr. Fred Butcher and our school board for making available to the community the Steckler Building, soon to be available for development as a workforce center for hospitality and culinary, electrical, and heavy equipment operator, because we need that for Velocis. We also need to take a moment while we're talking about the high school. Let's celebrate that we're about to have the newest and most state-of-the-art high school in the state of Mississippi. And right across from it, we're about to have a fully renovated, brand new looking middle school. I am excited about that. You know, I'm so proud of all our high schools. Natchez High School, Cathedral, Adams Christian, and Natchez early college. In fact, it was exciting just a few months ago to celebrate the graduation of 40 graduates at NECA who now have their associate's degree and their high school diploma, most of them 4.0 and higher, and they are headed on scholarship to college as juniors. One of the only programs and most celebrated programs in the country, and it's right here in Natchez. Folks, we don't have time for negativity because we have too much good stuff happening. I'm excited, too, about the vault. 
Robbie Cade Furge, and your husband Maurice, you have brought to us, as Sarah just mentioned, you have brought to us what is now the second largest small business incubator in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> Helping small businesses get started and representative get this, they are already 28,000 square foot full and needing more space. We've got to talk now. It's all right to talk about economic development, jobs, tourism, but y'all, we are not a community unless we take care of our people. And I'm talking about recreation, services for our citizens. And I'm so proud of you, Alderwoman Valencia Hall, chairwoman of our <laughs> Recreational Renewal Task Force. And our new director, Sonora Cole, for the first time since 2008, we now have a new department, a full-time director, and they're hard at work. In fact, you will see by fall a renewal of all of our parts, new playground equipment at all six parks, new and improved and renovated restrooms, ADA compliance at all of these facilities. And in fact, we're about to add new tennis courts. We're about to renovate our baseball fields at Duncan Park. And we are about to fully renovate what is about to be Mississippi's newest historic landmark, the North Natchez Youth Center. And I couldn't be happier. We will also have another historic landmark soon, and it will also be fully restored, the Duncan Park Club, golf clubhouse. Speaking of golf, I, I know a few people are going to clap on this, Richard Burke probably being the main one. We now have disc golf and an 18-hole golf tournament ready disc golf course at Duncan Park. And so bring your Frisbees because disc golf is happening. We are about to renovate not only all of these things, but also community centers at Duncan Park. For the first time in a generation, the billiard room is going to be available again. The canteen is going to be available again. And have I even mentioned the events? Sonora Cole, you are wearing us out. Easter egg hunts, pajama jam, the father-daughter dance right here. What a success it was. Movies in the park, girls to lady, boys to gentlemen, and tomorrow, right here, we will have kick back to school. And then Alderman Ben Davis, it was your idea. Thank you. Fishing with the fathers at Natchez State Park this Saturday. But it couldn't happen without our partners. And we want to thank all who are pitching in. But one of the main partners in all of this is our Department of Public Works. And Justin Dollar and your team, I don't care what it is, I haven't seen people work that hard in the heat, overtime, every weekend, and they're doing it. Whether it's a special event or helping out at our parks. And Justin, we thank you. And Stratton Hall is giving you a standing ovation. I want to say this, it's time now to applaud our youth for setting such a great example. For the first time ever in May, we had a combined senior day right here in Natchez. A motorcade, it was over a mile long as Natchez High School, Cathedral, Adams Christian, and Natchez Early College celebrated together and picnicked together at Duncan Park. It has now become, Marla, another annual event. <laughs> I also, yeah, I, I tell you, excited. I also want to call out, my goodness, I am so excited to have Mr. Bert Hughes here. Bert, would you stand up? And any members of the Mayor's Youth Council who are here for the first time in a while, the Youth Council is back at work, and they have done so much in our community, starting with a renewal at Jack Waite Park, work at Concord Park, at North Natchez Park, work all over our community, even 
even at our bandstand, downtown, at the Grand Hotel, raising money for the Humane Society, you name it, they've done it. And they've worked together representing all of our schools. That is the true definition of unity. It's already there with our youth. And thank you for the example you set. You know, when we talk about recreation and services, we've got to remember that we are a city that cares. And what a great city we have. We have so many charitable events, it's hard to even name them all. Raising money for everything from cancer research to suicide prevention. John Grady Burns, we love you. Ronnie Calhoun is in Jackson right now representing us as the new Real Man Wears Pink. And how many other events have we had year after year raising thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars? I also want to celebrate our stew pot, feeding thousands of people each month, and our own Natchez Senior Center, Sabrina Bartley, delivering a thousand meals a week in our community. And y'all, quite a few hundred got to enjoy some nice turkey and dressing last Thanksgiving. Thank you, downtown Carla Brown. We're looking forward to doing that again. I also want to thank our Natchez Transit for providing that needed transportation for so many who are in need. And also, Dr. Carolyn Myers, what you're doing with Seeds of Change and helping the homeless and so many. And then Eddie Burks, Jim Blau, and Valencia Hall. I love that picture in the paper. Our community gardens are back. Our farmer's market is thriving, and we just couldn't be happier. I also want to do a shout out to Mr. If he's here, Mr. Cavett, Mr. Andrew Calvett, Habitat for Humanity is about to complete its 24th house. And that is a big deal. Now, you know, all of this is great, but it really doesn't amount to a hill of beans. At, at least that's what Joe Daltrey will tell you, unless we have a safe city. And we pledged that we would build a safer city here. Our Safe City Task Force last year, the year before, identified in several areas, and I'm so proud of Alderwoman Sarah Carter-Smith for chairing that task force and the police committee. A lot of those visions are now in place. We have returned to traditional policing. We have new cars, we have new uniforms, we have new equipment, we have a partnership between fire and police like we've never had before. And I want to echo what you said, Representative Johnson, all of our firefighters, police officers, first responders, stand up. We applaud you. And our new recruits, next week, we have a new recruit class going to the academy, and we couldn't be prouder. We are so proud of you. So we salute you. To do what they do while the rest of us are safe, tucked in bed asleep. I want to tell you, they're having drug busts. They're getting illegal guns off the street. We're hiring more officers and firefighters while other cities are struggling to hire the first one. Thank you, Caroline Deason, our Director of Human Resources. The morale is back. I saw it today painted on a wall at the PD. The morale is back. And Crime Stoppers is back too. You can report crime to 1-800-222-TIPS, and it is working. In fact, just two years ago, we were meeting with grieving parents because of unsolved crime. Now we're celebrating with them as those crimes are being solved and those individuals are being sent to jail because justice has to happen for everyone in Natchez. We're following our crime rates, and our crime rates are now lower across the board. In fact, our Viper unit, a new unit, we're so proud of you. And also our SWAT team. Now get ready. I talked about returning to old-fashioned policing. I've got an exciting announcement. I don't even think our aldermen know. 
we just received a $100,000 public safety grant. <laughs> Sarah knows. And that is going to pay overtime so that our officers can be out there working harder with radar guns, enforcing those speed limits. So folks, buckle up, get ready. Old-fashioned policing is back. Also, I'm so proud of the awards. The MML Public Safety Award, the top award in Mississippi, Crime Stoppers Department of the Year, and yes, I know Joe, Crime Stoppers Lifetime Achievement Award, and a major announcement. A major announcement. Are you ready? As of this week, Natchez Police Department is now a fully accredited training academy in the state of Mississippi. They've been working hard on this. We can now train part-time and auxiliary officers from all over the state. And that is the first step toward eventually and soon having a fully accredited training academy where we no longer send you off, but we train you right here. Thank you, Chief. Well, it's good to do all this, but you got to pay the bills, right, Megan McKenzie? And, and two years ago, we had a fiscal dilemma. But let me tell you now, we have a fiscal renewal. We are exercising smart money management. And the alderman can tell you, gone are the days where, well, if it looks good, it gets voted on. No, it's got to make sense. And I mean smart sense. And it also has to be at the best it can be. We're talking managing your money like we would manage our own and like we should. Because at the end of the day, that is one of our most sacred responsibilities. And so we have completed three audits in less than two years, and we are working on another one. Sim, Silas Simmons, Carr Hammond, wow, we appreciate all the work you're doing. And y'all, we have not raised taxes, but yet where two years ago everybody was scared, we're operating in the black. And we're able to do things. In fact, we're carrying healthy reserves. Why? Because we're doing things smart. For example, we have a better health insurance program for our employees. About to start our third year in this program, we didn't just go into it half-heartedly. We brought in a consultant who helped us for free, Bill Henley, a dear friend. And he worked with local agent Fred Parker. And we are saving 350000 a year. What that means is next year, our savings will be at $1 million. That's just one example. People ask how we're doing it. Well, that's an example. When you can save that kind of money in one area, you can do a lot more in another. And on top of that, our employees are enjoying lower rates and better coverage. And the city is now paying 100% of the single employees health expense. And on top of that, we've managed to give historic raises. And we are going to give some more. And yet we're doing it within a balanced budget. And I see West Middleton, president of the Board of Supervisors back there. We couldn't do anything without our collaboration. And I see Mr. Fred Butcher here somewhere. I, where, I saw him a minute ago. We couldn't do anything without our, our collaboration. I know Lance Harris is here. Uh, we love our, uh, our, our friends at the Archives and History. I'm just leading up to tell you this. Kathleen Bond, are you here? The parks, uh, the National Park. Because we are working in sync with each other, we're bringing serious money. The trips to Jackson... Thank you, Representative Johnson, and all of our delegation, both state and federal. The trips to Jackson are paying off. The trips to Washington are paying off. The city alone in the last two years has brought home over 13 million in grants and special appropriations. In collaboration with our partners, the county, the schools, the airport, national parks, Mississippi Department of Archives and History, 
Another over 20 million. Folks, that is over 30 million brought into our community. And people wonder what Greg Harper and Manny McPhillips are doing. And I'm excited. Yes, give them a hand. I'm excited about the plans Katie Blunt has for the Natchez Grand Village and for Jefferson College, a game changer for Natchez Adams County. So let's celebrate our successes, but now, hey, you can clap. But now let's look forward. Let's look forward. You know, just as that river flows, this Natchez current must forever flow. Flow ever forward. What I love about a river is that it is in a constant state of motion, a constant state of renewal, and it is an... Uh, have you ever seen a river argue with itself about which direction it's going to take? One part wanting to take, let's go this left way. No, let's go this right way. No, a river just goes down the middle, and it happens time after time, moment after moment. And that's what the Natchez renewal is about. So just like that river flows, that Natchez current, so must we. And so today... I'm going to share some exciting announcements. The two years that are now past have been amazing. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Today, today we release our Med Natchez plan. Medical Economic Development for Natchez. This is an exhaustive plan that was paid for by Natchez Inc. through a grant. And it was done by the Horn Group. The Horn Group, a, rep a reputable company throughout our, our region, wrote the recovery plan for Hurricane Katrina, the recovery plan for the state of Louisiana after the hurricane. They have now written a Med Natchez plan for us and included in it a medical district, soon to be our commercial B5. It already includes major partners, Merritt Health, Doctors Row, Southwest Mississippi Mental Health, the Mary Bird Cancer Center, they just invested close to a million dollars in their facility. It also includes the old community hospital, now under new ownership with a new vision, and we are excited. And it also includes vision for what we hope will soon be the Trace Township Medical and Retail Center. You can clap. An important component we are hoping will be residential because we need more. And most exciting, but I can't say much about it, but over the next couple years, I'm going to be working hard on this. A medical school in Natchez, Mississippi. And so the task force is about to be announced soon, and we want to thank Dr. Ben Yarborough. Dr. Yarborough, you're here. We want to thank him for agreeing to chair our task force. He's been waiting a while for us to get our act straight. We are ready now to move forward. Another thing on the Natchez Current, cruise ships. They're definitely on that Natchez Current. The American Queen bringing three boats a week during cruise season, which is the majority of the year. American Cruise Lines bringing another four every week. Viking Mississippi scheduled to arrive soon at a river near you. Another boat. That will bring us from seven to eight. They'll be bringing over 400 passengers a week. Eight buses. I know. Donna Sessions, how are we going to do it? Marsha Colson, we better buckle up, get ready. But then we're about to add a ninth boat to the river. And I want to invite all of you to come to a party. On August 30th at 12 noon, you are all invited to the riverfront under the hill as we christen the newest boat on the river, the American Symphony for American Cruise Lines. Yeah, yeah. American Cruise Lines has chosen Natchez, could have chosen any, any city on the river, but they chose Natchez to be the godmother city. That means the port of origination for the American Symphony. Working in partnership with the EOLA, yes, you heard right, and Southwest Airlines, 
I'm sorry, Southern Airways. I'm speaking it into being. It will be Southwest soon. There you go, Pastor Robbie. Southern Airways, the OLA, are going to work with American Cruise Lines so that by 2025, they will be starting and stopping cruises here in Natchez. We will be the first city in the state of Mississippi to be a port of origination. Watch out, New Orleans. Watch out, Memphis. Natchez is on the rise. And yes, I said the EOLA. I'm so grateful that during a time when so many people and businesses are in retrenchment phase, these folks are out there moving forward with their plans, and you'll see it happen soon. And along with it, an exciting announcement coming soon. Well, Southern Airways will be in Natchez next week having a meeting, and I can't wait. Can you, Wes? Richard Nelson, where are you? There he is. Richard Nelson, John McCullough, Dante Ware. Give it up for our airport commissioners. And the leadership of Adams County letting Natchez tag along and help. It teamwork, as Ricky Gray has said, it does make the dream work, and it's about to happen. Thank you. Also, in 2023, because all these boats are coming, we are going to get Silver Street done. We had to put it off a little bit. We couldn't tear it up with all the cruise boats coming this fall. And we also had about a million dollars to find. We're close to finding it. It's going to be, ha it's going to be happening. I want to also now make a major announcement. And I'm so proud to work with the Board of Aldermen with vision and with courage. Because we recognize now because of our smart money management, because of the fine fiscal condition we are in as a city, without raising taxes, it is time now to invest money in our buildings and our streets. And so get ready. Tuesday, we're going to move forward with a strategy to devote three million for the immediate renovation of our city's convention center. We've got to drive that demand. We need them coming here more and more, filling up our hotels, filling up our restaurants, and it's going to happen. We're going to move forward with a strategy Tuesday to very quickly renovate this building, $2 million, to make this auditorium the venue it always has been, but then some a major venue in our region for concerts, for special events, and for everything from Mardi Gras to Music Festival, we'll have it happening here. And the bathrooms are going to get a makeover. <laughs> Amen to that. We'll pass the plate on that one, Pastor Robbie. I also want to say we're going to put over one million in other significant city properties. We just made exterior renovations at NAPAC, and I am so proud of how it looks. Bobby Dennis, if you're here, what an amazing thing. But, but we didn't stop there at NAPAC. We also replaced the leaking Roof at City Hall, Edmund, you don't have to put this queen over your computer anymore. He did that every day for years. As he's left, he's had to cover the computers with this queen. We are, we are also excited that we've begun improving some other neglected properties. But included in our plan, this $1 million plan, we're going to create, we hope in concert with the county, a new 911 center at our police department. With the county and city working together, it's our hope to go there soon. Renovations, much needed renovations to our fire departments. To renovations to our civic center, y'all call it the community center. In the legislation that sets all this up, it is the community center. No, it's the civic center. We're about to put 350000 into it, and I'm excited about the new signage that will be 
that will be taking place. We are about to restore City Hall, renovate our City Council Chamber. We are going to bring utilities for major events like the concerts to the north end of the bluff. We're going to renovate the canteen at Duncan Park and Chesney Doyle. We're going to complete Hiram Revels Plaza. Norma West, Reverend Mitchell, Zion Chapel, all of the area businesses there. I can't wait. We are going to properly celebrate the great Hiram Revels, the first African-American member of either house of Congress, and he will have his own plaza here at what you know now as the MLK Triangle. But it doesn't do any good if you got to bump your way along to the events, right? We're about to put six million into our streets. We are following through with this strategy Tuesday and get ready. This year we cleaned Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Street from one end to the other for the second year in a row. We continued beautifying Liberty Road at the interchange and thank you MDOT for finally cleaning our overpass. We completed Daisy Street. We're about to finish some tweaks on Marble Stone and for the first time, hmm? 45 days, and for the first time in a generation, those residents will enjoy their community like they haven't been able to do. We also, Marsh McCullough, thank you, and garden lovers, we have improved flower baskets, and thank you, Public Works. They're going up right now all over town. We renovate, we, we're about to renovate Commerce Street. Thanks to an MDOT grant, it will become an arts district. We're about to renovate Locust alley but more working with the county we're going to see to it that morgantown road is repaired it will be a start but get ready and we're working together and then we are going to make a total of six million in improvements by the end of next year well, who wants to go out with me soon and switch the lights back on at the bridge? <laughs> We're working on it. Thank you, Representative. Thank you to all of our leaders in Jackson. We have half a million now to spend, and we're going to spend it. We may not get the color yet, the motion yet. This is phase one, but we're going to have our beautiful lit bridges again. And I want to do a call out. Thank you. I want to do a call out to my brother mayor, Buzz Craft of Vidalia, because we just love Buzz and we're working so closely together, Vidalia and Natchez, the Miss Lou. I am excited, though, about this, the best news of all, the best news of all. But let me share this with you. You know, two years ago, when you allowed us to become your mayor and board of aldermen, things were bleak all over our community and all over our nation. People didn't know if they would ever regain their life savings, uh, if they would even have a job, much less hold on to their family business. Well, I'm here to tell you that we instead look to our history in our over 300 years, we had never seen a challenge we could not overcome. And Natchez, we overcame that. And working together, the city, the county, our law enforcement, our emergency management, Mr. Bradford, our supervisors, our aldermen, Natchez became, according to Forbes magazine, the best place to visit in the top ten the top 10 best places to visit during a pandemic. When others, when others were cowering to fear, we were forging ahead with optimism and with a purpose, and it is time to do that again. The R word is on everybody's lips. We know we now are experiencing record inflation, 
higher than it's been since 1979. And we also know that interest rates are going up and everything is spelling the fact that we are about to have economic challenges in this country like we haven't had in a generation. But I want to tell you, our current is unstoppable. And we are going to forge ahead just as we did before. And if we could conquer that, we will conquer this. And let me just tell you, I have exciting news to share. Because instead of cowering to fear and trepidation, Instead of going into a mode of retrenchment, we rather, as you can see, are moving forward aggressively with great vision and opportunity because I want to share this with you and we have the documentation to back it up. Mississippi has just been named America's most affordable state. But even better... A study reported a few months ago by National Public Radio, Natchez is the most affordable city in America. <laughs> Sounds like an opportunity to me. And so I want to tell you, just the other day, we got together at City Hall, and I am so grateful for Devin Heath and his amazing team at Visit Natchez. And we got together with our new DNA, with Natchez Inc., we, with our Chamber of Commerce, and we discussed a new campaign for Natchez. You know, we're only half a tank from a million people. We're about to have air service. We are the most affordable place to play and the most affordable place to stay. And so get ready. A new campaign. Get it on your lips because Natchez, we're not slowing down. We're moving forward as America's most affordable city. And part of this strategy involves the Shift South campaign. It's time to bring it back. We made international headlines two years ago as the first city in the Deep South and one of the very first in the country to roll out a re remote worker incentive campaign. And it has worked. And we have been tracking the exposures and we stopped counting at a billion with a B. So many people have moved here because they were exposed to Natchez through the results of the Shift South campaign. Well, we're bringing it back because we want remote workers who are tired of the expenses in Austin, in Atlanta, in L.A., and New York, and chief, tired of the crime too. We're ready for them to move to America's most affordable city. Now, a minute ago, I shared the facts that we're out of real estate. So I see another opportunity, and we are already reaching out to residential developers to work with us so that anyone wanting to relocate to, to Natchez will have a house to buy or a house to build because Natchez, we need more. And we are about to go move forward with an RFP for broadband, working with our state leaders and federal leaders to bring our share of federal funds to Natchez for better broadband. And so, get ready. It's happening in Natchez, but it wouldn't be happening without all of you. I am going to ask, as I call you out, I'm going to ask you to stand, because I said at the beginning this is more than just one person. It's a collaboration of many. And I couldn't be here if it were not for all of you and for our amazing team. I would like our Board of Aldermen, Alderwoman Ward 1, Valencia Hall, Alderman Ward 2, Billy Joe Frazier, Alderwoman Sarah Carter Smith, Ward 3, Alderwoman Bridgewater Irving, Ward 4, Alderman Benjamin Davis, Ward 5, Alderman Dan Dillard, 
Ward 6. But y'all, we're going to keep on going. Remain standing. We have more to say. Our Adams County Board of Supervisors, we're so grateful for our president of the Board of Supervisors, Wes Middleton, Kevin Wilson, Ricky Gray, Angela Hutchins, Warren Gaines. We are excited about our partnership with the Adams County School Board. Mr. Fred Butcher, would you please stand? And any members of our school board, please stand. We thank you. And our Vidalia partner, Buzz Craft, our city attorney, Brian Calloway, our city clerk, Megan McKenzie, keep standing. Judge Lisa Dor Jordan Dale, our department directors and employees, what will we do without James Johnston? What will we do without Jody Rudder? Justin Dollar, please stand, please stand. Edmund, we have other department directors here. Sabrina Bartley, I'm looking for those who are here. Who am I missing? Our chief of police, our chief, our Joe Daughtry, our fire chief, Robert Arrington. Looking around, we have so many. I want to call out our executive team because we couldn't do anything without Richard Burke, without Charlotte Franklin, without Pam Patterson, without our community liaison, Nefa Hardy. I want to also have a shout out to our water department and all of those. Our Human Resources Director, Caroline Deason, and so many others remain standing. Our communications team, Dustin Hinkle, what could we do without you? Vidal Blankenstein, what could we do without you? I have never in my life seen people who do so much. Our preservation and planning commissioners, our new city planner who's over there working right now, Frankie Legault, our architect, Johnny Waycaster, our golf superintendent, Greg Brookings, our, our tennis pro, Johnny Wahlberg, our engineers, JKS, A&M, Volker, Williford, Gearhart and Knight, yes, remain standing. Our amazing partner, Alcorn, we love President Felicia Nave. Our amazing partner, Colin, President Jane Hewland Sims, and Vice President Colin Natchez Campus, Sandra Barnes. And we are so grateful for Betty Jo Harris and others who work so hard. Cleveland Moore, the Fallon Center and Technology Center. And we want to thank you to our law enforcement partners, Sheriff Travis Patton, Sheriff David Hedrick, and also so many from the local all the way up to the state, even the federal. We're talking Homeland Security, FBI, and everyone in between. Lance Harris, the Indian Village, Katie Blunt, who is our executive director at the Department of Archives and History, Greg Harper, Manning McPhillips, Chandler Russ, Natchez, Inc. What an amazing time it's been. Sue Stedman, Natchez Now, Debbie Hudson, Germany, and now Lynn Jenkins at the Natchez Adams Chamber of Commerce. Our new downtown Natchez Alliance, executive director, Diane DuPont, and board members, our four Natchez Friends of the Riverfront, Chesney Doyle, stand up. Our Rebels Plaza partner, Zion Chapel, Norma, West, Burden Mitchell, and all the area businesses. Richard Nelson, John McCullough, our amazing airport commissioners. Anthony Hauer, Wilbur Johnson, our amazing port commissioners. Carter Burns, Mimi Miller, our historic Natchez Foundation. Our Visit Natchez amazing dream team. Devin Heath, our commissioners, and all of their staff. Please stand. And I don't know what we'd do without... Warren Ruther, Nancy Ruther, Walter Tipton, and your amazing team at the Natchez Convention Center, keeping our most valuable asset open and going. Charlie Robertson, American Cruise Lines, John Wagner, American Queen, David Simmons, Viking, our EOLA team, Hayes Dent, Randy Roth, Rob Lubin, Macasia Sturdivant, and yes, Dickie Brennan. Thank you, Tate Taylor, John Norris, Crooked Letter Picture Company. Thank you, Daniel Lewis, Hallmark, and Lifetime. Thank you, Film Natchez and Film Mississippi. Arden Barnett, Ardenland, Stratton Hall, Mr. David Paradise, and if Laurie is here representing him, please stand. Garrett May and Merritt Health, Mr. Robert Purnell, 
and the Natchez U.S. Colored Troops Monument Committee. We are so proud of you. Dr. Carolyn Myers and her board at the Seeds of Change Foundation. Stand up, John West. That's your cue. Mark LaFrancis and the Mayor's Veterans Task Force, Jackie Robinson, Christmas in Natchez, the Rotary Club, the Kiwanis Club, Silas Simmons, our financial partner, Greg Everhart, and Jack Kelly, who have brought us and are keeping it going, Harmony in the Park. I just want to ask Andrew Calvert to stand up. I want to ask John Grady Burns, who has done so much with his benefit for suicide prevention. I want to ask our friends at the Natchez Humane Society to stand up. Natchez Spay Neuter, Hoofbeat, Hoofbeats and Paw Prints, Catherine McFate and Natchez Children's Services, Mike Marsh, Eurofest, the Natchez National Historic Park, Kathleen Bond, NAPAC, Bobby Dennis, our Natchez Pilgrimage Tours, Marsha Colson, our Natchez Garden Club, Donna Sessions, our Miss Lou Heritage Tours, uh, Brian, I don't know if they're here, Pearly Mac, Brian, and our friend Jeremy Houston. I want to also say... We are so grateful for our Southern Carriage Tours, Rev's Country Tours, Natchez Hop On, Hop Off, our Open Air Tours, Downtown Carla Brown, so many hotels, bed and breakfasts, restaurants and shops. We can't dare <laughs> name them all, and I know I'm leaving so many out. I want to also say thank you to our media partners. Thank you to the Natchez Democrats the Bluff City Post, WTYJ, Listen Up Y'all, Mid-South Broadcasting, Natchez TV, Miss Lou Magazine, Old River Peddler. I want to thank Mary Leslie, who does so much in our community. I want to thank Diana Glaze, who's the chairwoman of our music festival. Jay Dean, who does so much. The list goes on and on. I'm going to just say this. Sissy, I'm looking around for you. I see you over there, Mamie. Tracy, I'm looking around. Pastor Robbie, come on, stand up. YZ, why don't you stand up? In fact, I think, you know, Sabrina's already standing up over here. You know, it's just time for everybody. Jimmy Leslie, come on. Everybody stand up. Because this Natchez renewal would not be happening without you. And yes, our representative, Robert Johnson, our representative, we have so many. Representative Sam Mims. We have our representatives to thank for so much. We also have, uh, we also have over in uh, the Senate, we have Albert Butler. We, we have Melanie Sojourner. We have also, uh, help, help me out, Robert, over from uh, Kelvin Butler. And we also have Representative... Angela Cockerham. We have an amazing team. And then our federal delegation. I've just got to say it. Cindy Hyde-Smith, Roger Wicker, Michael Guest, and last but certainly not least, soon to be our new congressman, the Honorable Benny Thompson. And so at that, give yourselves a hand. And I want to end with this. I want to end with this. Just as that river continues moving forward, just as that Natchez current is forever strong, never slowing down, so are we. And may I also say this, God has blessed Natchez. His mercies are new each and every morning. And as long as we look to Him, the author and finisher of our faith, we can, through Christ, do all things and fear it's not going to exist in Natchez, Mississippi. We are a bold city moving forward together. You know why? Because we're special. Because we are the oldest city on the highest bluff of the most majestic river on the planet. And because at the end of the day, Natchez deserves more. Thank you. May God bless you. And may God bless Natchez. YZ, it's all yours.